Transformation Thursday with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft, y'all! Hey y'all, it's Kay. So today I'm going to be making some winter decor for my home. As you know, I just moved and I have nothing here. I'm going to be using one of these wood rounds that I got from Hobby Lobby. This inspiration ribbon, it's kind of a burlap background with a beautiful blue snowflake on it. It is wired, but I'm going to be taking that out for part of the craft. And I'm also going to be using a bit of this wired ribbon that's also two and a half inches and looks very much like burlap. I'm going to be using my go-to gel stain that I got at Hobby Lobby, some Waverly chalk paint in the color Lagoon, and some Waverly chalk paint in the color Plaster. This word that I got at Hobby Lobby, it says hello, it's a thick plastic and it was in the paper department. These wooden letters that I got at the Dollar Tree, one of these wooden snowflakes that I got at Hobby Lobby, they come in a package that contains several. One of these paper brads from Hobby Lobby that is shaped like a snowflake. And finally, some E6000 and also my hot glue gun. So the first thing I did was take my pencil and I just drew a line right down the middle of my board. And I'm just going to use a baby wipe and stain one half of my wood round, making sure that I also get the outside edges. Then I'm just going to paint the bottom half in the Blue Lagoon chalk paint by Waverly. I chose this color because it was the closest to the blue in the ribbon. I'm just going to measure out a piece that's a little larger than my board, and I'm going to take out the wire that's in the top and the bottom of the ribbon, use a little hot glue to attach it down onto my board, and you notice I'm covering up more of the stained side than I am the blue side. And then I'll tuck it around the back, making sure I get glue on the edges and smooth that down with my finger protector. And then once I've accomplished that, I'm just going to cut off a little bit of the excess there. And at this point is when I decided that I would paint my letters that spell winter in the Waverly chalk paint. The color is plaster. To further dress up the top of my wood round, I'm going to make a very simple bow. I'm going to cut two pieces of this ribbon at about seven inches each and I dovetailed the ends, and then I'm coming back with the solid ribbon, and I'm going to cut them at about six inches each and dovetail the ends. Then I'm going to place them on a diagonal, pinch them in the middle, and then I'll just tie a bit of this jute rope right here in the middle and secure it with some hot glue. Just keeping it really simple for this decor piece. To make a hanger for the back, I'm going to place one of these pop tops from a soda can right in the center with some hot glue. Then I'm going to decide where to place my word winter and then come in and carefully watch my spacing and glue it down with some E6000. I didn't use hot glue to attach it to this piece, although you could. I wanted to have some extra drying time so I could slide my letters around and get them perfectly spaced. I'm going to use hot glue to attach the word hello kind of towards the top. And this is the time I should tell you that I kind of regret not moving it down about a half an inch closer to the word winter. But once I got it attached, it was a little too late for that. So maybe if you make one, you can remember and watch your spacing on the word hello. And at this point, I'm going to attach the bow just using again hot glue and securing it on the diagonal to the left. I'm going to take the little paper brad and twist down the little prongs on the back and then take some glue and secure it to the middle of the bow just to dress it up a little bit. And then we'll take our wooden snowflake here at the bottom and attach it with hot glue as well. And that's pretty much it for this project. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. We upload videos three days per week, offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, paper crafting, hauls, and craft show information. We just know you'll find something you'll like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to take some bud vases and some various glassware that I got from Goodwill Outlet and turn them into candlesticks. We're going to use a little bit of Waverly chalk paint in plaster and some sandpaper and we are going to transform these into a set. 
The first thing I wanted to do was give all of my bud vases a good coat of paint. I chose to use the Waverly in the plaster. I like that little bit of cream to my white. I didn't want it to be stark white. And I wanted to paint each one of them to kind of give them a cohesion, make them look like they belong together. I am always seeing this glassware at the thrift store and I hate that it ends up going to the landfill a lot of times. And since I don't really use a lot of bud vases, I thought it could be cool to turn them into taper candles sticks now the opening of these are different on all of them on some of them it can be smaller than your taper so you may have to trim down your taper a little bit and on some of them the opening is a little bit bigger than the tapers that I was able to find so you may have to put sand or pebbles or something in them to hold your candle upright now once we get our paint on and it has dried i'm going to take a piece of sandpaper and this is just sandpaper that i get from the dollar tree and i'm going to go over and give these a really good distressing i love this one that has all this detail in it i wish i could have found more like that i thought it turned out really pretty but even these that don't have as much detail turn out really pretty once you start distressing and getting down to the glass it makes them all look the same and looks like that they were meant to be that you meant to have these different shapes and sizes together and i was really happy with how they turned out i'm just going over them and distressing them as much as I like and that is the key to it you do what is to your taste if you don't want to distress them you really don't even have to do that so I'm going to finish these up and then we will add our candles Now that we have them the way we want them, all we're going to do is add our candles in. You see that I have to push some of them down in there. And then for this one, the opening was a little bit too big. So I just took a bag of this sand that I got from the Dollar Tree and I ended up putting the whole bag in there. And it holds my candle upright and makes it fit in there and it gives it some lift. Now on this one, the opening was a little bit too small. So I just took a knife and trimmed down my candle and once I put it in there, my set was finished. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be making one more piece of winter decor and it kind of goes with the first piece I made. I'm going to use one of these frames that I got at the Dollar Tree that comes complete with wooden beads on top. One of these snowflake ornaments that I got at Hobby Lobby on clearance in the color blue. A small piece of burlap fabric. Some Mod Podge. Some Waverly chalk paint in the colors Lagoon and Plaster. And finally, one chenille stem. The first thing I'm going to do is deconstruct my frame. I'm going to take off the beads and reserve those to use on the project. And then I'm going to take out the back. I love this frame because it has glazing points on the back and you can easily pry those up. And then I'm just going to remove most of this front cover that has the words autumn on it. But I didn't take it all off, just the shiny part. And then I'm going to come in with a wooden skewer and place my beads. And I just have a little poster putty in between them to hold them down steady. And I'm going to paint three of the wooden beads in the blue color and three in the plaster color and leave two in the natural color. And for the frame, I'm going to paint it also in the plaster colored chalk paint. I'm going to paint all of the edges, the inside, and the front and it did take about one and a half coats because I touched up some of the lighter areas. For the background of my frame I'm going to take some Mod Podge and apply a very generous coat to the background then place down my burlap fabric smoothing it down and then I'll place another coat of my Mod Podge on top as well and then put it aside to dry for several hours. And once the Mod Podge is dry I'm just using my scissors to trim it up a bit and then I'm going to place it down into the frame, secure the glazing points once again. I'm using hot glue to attach my snowflake and center it there in the middle. 
Then I had to decide on a pattern for my beads to go onto my chenille stem. And once I did that, I ended up leaving out one of the white ones, the plaster color. And then I just strung them on and I'm going to twist that chenille stem securely at the bottom. And then I'm going to come back and use my hot glue to secure them to the back. This would be a good time to use a heavy duty stapler, but guess what? It's in a box somewhere and I can't find it. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use these two little signs that I got from Goodwill Outlet. They came as a set and I got them for 59 cent. Some Waverly chalk paint in plaster. Some wording that I cut out using my Cricut. I'll put a link to the SVG file down below if you would like to have a copy of it. And I'll also put a PDF of the wording. If you don't have a cutting machine, you can always print out the wording and use the pencil method to transfer this to your project and then just fill it in with a black marker. I'm gonna use this line drawing that I have. I'll also put a link to it in the description box. A black permanent marker, you can use any brand. A jot permanent marker and a pencil. So the first thing I wanted to do was paint the top of my signs with my plaster Waverly chalk paint. Now I chose not to sand this down. I probably could have took some of that dark color off and it might have only taken one coat instead of two, but I really like the texture that was on the top of these. And once this paint dried on top of that texture, it looked almost like linen and I really loved that effect. So I gave it two good coats of my paint and I left it to dry. I love using these old signs and pictures that I pick up from the thrift store to make home decor. When people get tired of their home decor, a lot of times they will either throw it out or they donate it to the thrift store. And I love showing you how you can use a little bit of paint and a little bit of imagination and turn it into something that fits your current taste. Once our paint was dry, I wanted the sides of this to be black. I started to use paint and a paintbrush, but I was afraid that I would bleed it over to the top of it. You know how your brush kind of bleeds over? You can see that it did it here with the plaster paint, and I didn't want that to happen. So I just grabbed a black permanent marker, and this worked perfectly. It filled in so easily, and it looked great, and I didn't have any bleeding whatsoever. So I did all four sides of both of my pictures, and then I moved on. Now I want to transfer my line drawing onto one of my boards. And the method I chose to use is the pencil method. It's the one that we all used in grade school where you just scribble on the back of it with a pencil, then you lay it onto your project and trace over it. And it's going to transfer the lines or the wording, if that's what you're doing, onto your project. And then you can just fill it in with paint or a marker. I love these line drawings, abstract art, I always have, and I thought this piece perfectly fit what I had in mind. Once I got my lines transferred over, I'm just using a permanent marker, and this is more of a fine tip one, and filling them in. This is so easy to do, and it goes so fast. I just love how it turns out looking and it doesn't matter if you know you have some starts and stops in your marker because then it makes it look like you actually drew this on instead of tracing it and I just love the effect that it has. Now we're going to transfer our wording onto our sign. If you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, you're just gonna cut it out, put your transfer paper on it after you've weeded it, and then pull the backing off of this. I was careful so that I didn't pull up all of those little letters. Once I get it onto my transfer tape, I'm gonna put it on top of my project and then I just use my little squeegee to get it on there and peel off the tape. Now, if you do not have a cutting machine, you can use the exact same method that we used with the line drawing. Just scribble on the back, then transfer it onto your project and use a marker to fill it in and you're gonna get this same look and it's so easy to do, but I wanted to be able to show some Cricut projects this year, so this is one of them. Once we get our wording on, this project is finished. Thank 
you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We would love for you to tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Wild Card Wednesdays, and then finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturday mornings. Bye, y'all!